Hmm. Right. That's huh. interesting. I don't. Is that e that yam yam? Okay, yam yam. Do you know who Twits Twizzy is? Can is he was he on that. the? I don't know. Um, like I, I last time I casted them, I don't remember that. Stream just started, so, um, yeah. Welcome back to TPL week two. We got no limits versus Inferno. We'll start with Inferno on Chalet. Um, see if both teams are ready, and then we'll get this show on the road. So Inferno did go to Chalet uh, first week against Bloodhound. Uh, they did lose 8-6 on that map. Um, so we'll see how they do tonight. Adjusting their strats and whatnot. Polishing any issues they had. All right, let's, let's get her going. To be fair, this time they're not facing EO, so he was the main issue yeah. last time. So. Oh, yeah. Me and my big Monty plays right there. Ooh. Jumping in sight and dying immediately. Well, Ooh. not immediately. That's what that was the issue. Almost immediately. <laughs> so you, were there, you were there for like 20 <laughs> seconds. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we get some uh, different bands here. I know they banned Finca and Valkyrie last time, but they're bringing out the Flores, which is really good. I'd love to see a good Flores ban. Um, I'm hoping that they're able to ban either the Cade or the Mira, if not both, because I really... I hate like when teams rely on those because it's kind of the same game over and over again when the mirror is up the Cade not so much for the mirror it's pretty default to what you do with her um i'm hoping that it kind of gets some shakes up here hopefully the mirror gets banned and we can kind of see some the good old-fashioned strats versus strats um no limits you're banning the valkyrie along with the thatcher uh, hopefully the mirror comes out here from inferno if not i don't know what else they would ban maybe the Cade, but i would expect the mirror to be more prominent no, we leave the mirror up. If we see that, it should be a pretty... It, this just basically makes downstairs very powerful, but... Yeah. Whether they exploit it or not. That'll be a site to go to, and they did play Bloodhound there. Uh, that Thatcher was on the board, which made taking those main breaches quite easier, so we'll see how they adjust around that. Thatcher, bam. Yeah, there's a the mirror. Um, I am noticing... I'm hoping that uh, Yam Yam kind of listens to what we talked to, to him about last time. I'm hoping that he able, he's able to place his utility and kind of play a bit more structured. Because last time he was a bit aggressive, a bit radical, um, a bit kind of silly uh, with the way he played. And I think that hopefully this week we can see a really structured Yam Yam, a really gun-heavy one. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing if he's adapted or if he's going to be uh, quite similar to what he was last week. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. This will be their second shot on LA. The kitchen dining hole that you have to do is not very hard, so if you aren't good on that roam clear, it will cause you quite a few issues with it. So let's see if they do something like that again, which it's looking like they are with the Discover the location of a bomb. So, oh, well, this is going to have to be fun. Sorry. I'm going with their roam clear and taking that top floor control. Here, see you now. Ace, you know, the red soft. For Ten soft seconds remaining. Sledge on the floor. So that might make a five seconds of sight uh, pressure a bit more difficult when they have uh, attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. Spawning over, three spawning over by rocks. Other two on helicopter. I'd imagine they go for a uh, basic library overtake, but we'll see how they go. Looks like they opened up that big window, all, big master window already, trying to get an early pick off of it. Bring up an fly. It is good to throw a player on that just get your cut off. Which I guess in fair taking up will be pose less of a threat to uh, shop there. Playing right on black. Um I'm hoping to see some more there's some actual really nice drone in here coming from uh no limits here, because I wanna say the main thing that kind of in I wanna say caused the loss of Inferno last week was they weren't really droning properly. They had a lot of misplays on their drone and drone work, and if they can kind of Drone people out and have an idea where everybody plays, I feel like it'll be a much different game. Those three ADSs playing on that single shield could cause an issue, but I think they're going for a quick burn here. All the ADS is down, I think they got the shield now. If I'm right? Yeah, they did. Pushing the aggro. Oh. They will be slowed down by that mirror window. Got a nice power pipe. Already gun taking off way from Buck. Still got that player on big that they do have. 
we'll have to be careful for. It is starting to get crossfired a bit here from the grid as well. They pick on Gen to open 5v4. 5v4, they are working that top control very nicely. Yeah, I, I'm noticing that they kind of just backed off a little too soon, in my opinion. Big um, they let them get... No, these guys are... They back away from the mirror there a bit too quickly, and I think that could have cost them a bit of their lives. Our and Ergo here getting a nice pick onto the Jackal. 4v3, full control upstairs for the attackers. It looks very unlikely for Inferno to pull away with the win here, but they could throw away some lives here. On it, Ergo. 4v2 with a minute left. It is looking like a very solid round. No limits right now. Just working that top floor, getting any cheeky picks they can off. Aggressor of sorts, take, shooting out that mirror, I believe Wes made. Scaps takes down who me. 2v3 now for, for Inferno. It is very winnable still, however it is it is a no limit sided matchup right now. With those 36 seconds, I got plenty of time to work vertical. This mirror is going for the flank to get uh, brings it down to 2v2. So it, they either have to play those frags or go for plant, and in that plant situation, it's essentially a 1v2 for, uh, for, or for no limits, because they will have only one guy with the gun up. Breach is open. Looks like both players have remaining. fallen off site. They are going to go for a plant directly on the chest. Not Ace will be able to pick up a frag on Mira, bringing it down to a 2v1. To plant is down. Activating they are in a very solid position to win this right now. It'll be all yeah, on Yon to bring that re he is. Uh, interesting choice here. Decided to go for a completely off site here for the defenders. They kind of let them take site, but maybe if Yum Yum can get a nice pick onto one of the attackers here, it can completely just change how the rounds going to go. Um, no, he doesn't understand where they last. The yeah. It honestly, it looked really good there. I'm surprised the good knight's coming out from No Limits here. They had a very interesting attack, but I don't think that was a good knight worthy kill, in my opinion. But hey, I'm not the guy that's playing the game. Maybe it felt a lot different than. Uh, then I'm seeing it, but I want to say excellent attack there from No Limits. I feel like they took upstairs fairly quickly. They capitalized of a couple of a couple of uh, Inferno's mistakes. I think that they backed off that mirror a bit too soon, but maybe there's something I didn't see. I don't really understand it, but they they kind of just let them take that a little bit too quickly, in my opinion. But uh, Inferno was able to claw that back pretty well uh, until they kind of just let them have sight. And I think when as soon as they realized the site was clear and that no one was on it, they were able to go for a plant and then. I believe it was Mav that took a one, and he won it, and it was kind of just the, the bringer of bad days for uh, Inferno there. Yum Yum, unfor unfortunately, not be able to take that kill. But I want to say something really quickly. Tremendously, like he, he's in, he's placing all of his utility down, he's playing quite smart, and I want to say it's a completely different Yam Yam that I'm seeing this week than last week. Um, and I'm really happy he's kind of fixed what was the issue with him last week. Yeah, it, it, it was a very tough for take, with, especially with Thunder Out. I would have expected him to be a bit more contested on that. You, you have an opportunity like that where you're not contesting from the mirror, and you take that. Ten seconds remaining. Don't complain about it a whole lot. You do get that. But I'm, Five seconds left. What I'm a like, bit confused about is they don't go downstairs. They have the mirror up. They have these really powerful operators, and they decide to go upstairs first. They're maybe testing the waters a bit. Because I feel like they may have thought that they could have won that round if they had just played it a little differently. I think that might just be going for a little bit of a feeler here. Nice two C4s, one shield. Looks like a pretty default setup, I want to say, for uh, the defenders here. Yeah, it's, it's looking like a fairly default setup. They don't have a lot of things dedicated below. Trying to get aggressive and get an early pick, but it will not work out. We now got Shop playing close on Mez here. They do have crosses on him besides the match, but he won't play off the fireplace. Just get out of there with his life. Which is not a bad play it by any means. But they are looking like just a default library over. Uh, take here, go for that main breach, and plant for half wall is what I guess in their game plan is, but we'll see how she works out. Still have a 5v4 with two minutes left, so no limits is in a very strong position. They do have to be careful of those two C4s playing below from again. Attackers have located start a bomb. With an NV card. We'll start getting some nades in on the piano, but that will be some linemen. pulls himself up, but doesn't, doesn't get caught by it. Located. We'll get shocking boxes off wall. Buck will start working on the what I uh, am kind of confused about here is that Yang Yam was playing the Omai. He gets, well, uh, in my opinion, uh, way too aggressive for a Omai player. If you lose someone like that early on, it can really just destroy around. 
a nice pickup right. from Kumi. Two players. Two players only two I don't even know if Inferno are below those C4s. One is coming up solar. They do have drone on him. Will he be able to fight? He does. Good round. Great round from No Limits. Yeah, really nice entry there from Humi. I don't even. We didn't catch him. I don't think they knew he was there. He just kind of snuck in. Like like last game. I think there's just a little bit of a confusion on the side of the defenders, not really understanding where people are. And it's okay. It's okay for early rounds. It happens. Nerves can get to you. I think later this game, if this keeps happening, though, later on, there could be a more uh, in-depth issue than what we're seeing. But I'm hoping that that's just like a nerves thing and that they can kind of get over it well as we go down here. Because I don't think by any means Inferno was a bad team, and I don't think um, we're going to see as a dominant half as we did see last game with the 7-2. I'm hoping that they can kind of pull us rounds here. I want to see an overtime game coming up for them because they are a fantastic team, and I want to see uh, a bit of change of pace. Um, and maybe a bit more uh, sternness in the way they hold things. Well, yeah, so far, no limits have just been able to completely tear through these offside holds. And they've been able to take that map control early. Is that, I believe, is that in minute 30? They already had range open, and, and we're looking at also. And when they just walked in there, they were able to capitalize on, the, on those uh, gaps. In there. Perfect. Next round there for no limits. They are going back to the down here for round three. Looking like the same setup as prior. So we'll Attackers see if are able moving to defuse a bomb. Adjust their, uh, how they hold it here and waste a little more time on that vertical hold. It is looking like, well, for the most part, the same take from No Limits. They are going to start over from Master's side. Looks like they're throwing a guy on that big window early as well. Trench run out. Um, the all around looks like a pretty default take here from the sides of Gnome Limits. I'm, I'm noticing that the Jackals bring Claymores over the smoke grenades, which is not something you entirely see super often, but I'm hoping that that was the right Jackers choice for them, because those smoke grenades can be insanely viable. Attack oh, but the team the kill team. onto the Thermite, that might have just cost him around. I'm curious to see where that came from, although we won't see because he left the game. I'm hoping that wasn't a rage quit and it was because of some other issue, because that would be hilarious if it was. Um, I'm hoping that that's kind of a thing. Uh, they have no extra reinforcements, no nothing. They seem to have placed all the utility, which is insanely good for the defenders here. 5v4. They still have everything up. It looks like it's... The Inferno should be able to run away with this if they just are stern with their upstairs hold and don't give them too much ground. Although I am noticing that Jackal, I believe, is upside down repelled in the main window. They cannot make any mistakes there or they will lose their life. Jen is fantastic at this position here and I'm hoping that he can kind of just... Keep it calm, keep it safe, and doesn't actually let himself die there because he is in a very influential position. And they are starting to work out that shield. Attacker dropping the big pick from shop there. Bring it down to the creator. Inferno's in a very great position in this round right now. He sees the jet, but he not shoot. V card will get a refrag onto the up there, bringing it down to a 3v4. Got a minute 20 left on the board. Jen will take V card up a bit here. It's not looking like Inferno or No Limits is in a great position right now with those bodies still up. Yon will get a big pick on those solar windows holding that cutoff. So right now it's both just Kilo and V card. Mostly just trying to pick away what this vertical hole is. Who knows what exactly they'll be able to do. Jen is starting to get a bit bit aggressive here. Trying to get a cheeky pick off on Finka here. And last guy's just sitting on big window. Just 45 seconds, just gonna sit there and wait. Possibly not round. So. Yeah. I wanna say that wasn't a lack of. I wouldn't say that was a bad attack from No Limits. I would think it was an excellent defense on the side of Inferno. It could have also contributed to uh, having Buck not here, having the team kill happen. But I wanna say that Inferno kinda stayed true to their, their defense there and they weren't exactly. Uh, weren't too. Uh, what's the word? Forgiving in terms of them pushing them out. They kind of just stood stern with the position, especially Jen there. Uh, he played that really, really well, and he was able to catch up and off guard. He plays the position really well. Every time that I've seen him play there, he always gets a really nice, really nice picks, and he plays that really, really well. Yeah, it was a lot cleaner of a round there from Inferno. So whether it was just them communicating better on what they're holding exactly, as well as having the, uh, no limits, lose their hard breach there early, which to, to the team kill, that, that doesn't help anybody. So, solid round either way. Um, move back down to Matt, or move back up to Ma Master and Office here for round four. Looking like just your same fairly standard operator lineups here. Nothing crazy. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. What I am 
I'm not confused about the fact that they still have Mira up. It's round four now, and they have not touched base. It may I may be naive, naive to think this, but downstairs is super duper powerful with that Mira. Even if you want to extend upstairs, you can figure out somewhere to place her. She is just an insanely powerful operator. I was hoping I'd see something else, some more strat oriented rather than the Mira. But I feel like Inferno, if you're able to abuse something that's as powerful as Mira, why not do it? And they've only been using it really on their kitchen setup, so I don't think they brought it for Master either. Master's a bit more difficult to make the Mira work, but definitely Basement's super strong with her, and I'm kind of interested to hear why they're not doing it. But maybe they're just following the chat book, maybe they're following something like that, and uh, can't really blame them what they're doing. A big role there, but once again, it's looking like the same sort of default take from library over. Starting to get my got not ace playing on the sword, because they will have to be gently for an early pick here, or will he just sit there? And big nade. I think he's getting made it out, right yeah. 5v4 for no limits, 30 seconds into the round. That is quite Attackers big. Attackers have located a bomb. Big opportunities for them because at the moment now it's just Thunderbird playing. The boat. Sorry, Thunderbird and Shot playing downstairs, so we just have two players on the side. There yeah, and I want to say the Yam Yam being alive this long is actually be very helpful in terms of the internal lineup here. Uh, every bit of uh, disc that he's able to throw, I'm hoping that, that that nade gets caught by one. Yeah, and I'm hoping that one more gets caught. Or he swings out. Yeah, Yam Yam is a very aggressive player, but he's good as a gun skill. Nice 4v4 lineup here. A nice trade up from a switch up. Yam Yam getting one on the V card. Um, Breach is still up though, getting the getting the wall. 4v3 here on the side of Inferno. Looking really confident on them. Umai has one disc in pocket. It looks like it might be an Inferno round here, unless the attackers manage to exploit an overpeak here from, uh, no, uh, from Inferno, but I really doubt it. Three smoke canisters left. It looks good. Looks very clean. I, I think they've done a really good job this round so far. Yeah, it'll, it'll all come magnet. down to how disciplined they're able to Catching how projectiles. they're able to communicate those crossfires. Because at the moment, their only way in is through that breach. Because they aren't fighting through the on the shield, piano shield. It's going to be a hard task. So they, they are going to have to communicate. Either they don't even have a whole lot of units. There's no explosives left on the board. Flashbang. So their goal is their only hope of is to get a flash. Flash. So that's going to be a fun, fun exercise. Big pick from shop. 2v4 for. Not Ace will take some damage up from Shop. Who will trying to get a cheeky pick off on this K9 doorway? Big pick from No Ace to bring it down to a 2v3. Who will might be able to get long angle on this piano player, but falls off does get the opportunity to. Inferno's in a great spot in this round right now. They have their their positioning is great. They still have that piano shield up. Although Yam will fall off, so Jack Yama gets a big kick. Kulo is in. 15 seconds remaining. Jen will take him on the uh, I want to say specifically on the uh, player Virgo here. Um, he consistently plays that smoke and he plays it really, really well. He plays really passive, really um, disciplined. He never overswings. I want to say. Ergo on that smoke is a force to be reckoned with, and he has shown leaps and bounds improvements from last week. Last week, he just wasn't able to get in those positioning. His positioning was a bit off, but this week, you can see a complete, re completely reformed Ergo. He looks like he's doing a hell of a job, and I want to say if he can continue to do that, uh, Inferno can just run away with this. If they, he, if the fraggers of Inferno can continue to get these really nice kills, um, if Jen can avoid the nades, I feel like this would be a fantastic game to watch, and I'm hoping it can go to overtime here. Um, I was kind of worried of a split going 7-2, but I'm happy that Inferno's kind of woken up and kind of adapted to what No Limits is doing. I'm liking the amount of nades that they're bringing consistently on the side of No Limits. At least one person has nades, and more consistently two. Um, and that's really helping them a lot. You can see the nade kills come out, all the utilities getting removed. It's really, really useful to have these nades. And I think that was a huge a reasoning why App State was unable to win last game, is because they weren't really... Using seconds left before um, I think that this is kind of conditioning this game. If they can kind of avoid the nades, if they can kind of use the nades properly, 
it, it can go either way. It's a very close game. Right now, there are six nades on the board for no limits, as well as those three pieces of burn. So they're going to have to be careful with those flashes for clearing off breach, as well as pillar, because those are both necessary things to clear if you are going for a main breach take. However, it looks like they are focusing snowmobile right now. V-card's taking, taking trophy control, possibly getting in an early engagement. Up. Gunfire's coming out. A little pre fire. He is getting taken out. That is a big pick to clear that Rome presence out. So at the moment, all four players, or sorry, we have three players left. Three I'm fumbling words, apologies. Three players for uh, Inferno sitting on site here, with the fourth one sitting on top floor, Mez. So it is looking in a very. Right at the moment, it's. Inferno's in a great. Spot. Oh, <laughs> the on this round. They are getting that boiler wall open. Who knew is starting to get a bit aggressive here with those navy pillar shield. There we go here. Hopefully we'll be able to throw something. Oh, shit. Who's me? Big, big kill from Yom. Not ace. Refrag. Not ace. Big double. Who me gets in? Gets third. It's all going to come here. I'm down to busy, but they are unable to capitalize. I want to say really quickly that Yom getting aggressive there was actually really, really good. It was unfortunate that he couldn't get the second kill there, but I want to say that I don't think Ergo was able to throw down a smoke. I don't think he did. I'm not sure I wasn't able to really see that, but if we can kind of get that more utility usage used on the defenders here to try to deny that rush in, because you just saw that they kind of just walked in and won their gunfight. So that's the attackers did. Um, I think the more consistently that they're able to use your utility, and if the Rome machine stay alive just a teensy bit longer and maybe communicate a little bit more with each other and try to cut off a little bit more crosses, I want to say that the Jaeger and the Vigil were on completely different sides of the map, which in, in a comp scene that really shouldn't happen. Having them so separated could really be an issue. And I'm thinking that hopefully this round, if there are those two Romers again, they're going to kitchen dining. I think that there probably won't be a very prominent Romer. But if they go back to a roaming thing, if we go into overtime here and they go, decide to go for the roaming status, they need to be a bit more communicative and they need to be more together because we saw that they kind of just exploited them being really far apart. They kind of just killed the egg and rushed in and they had a lot more control than they probably should have. Um, and that really relied on the uh, utility insight. And when the utility insight wasn't able to be deployed as quickly as it should have been, um, it kind of just all fell apart in the sides of Inferno. Yeah, taking out that Jaeger early is it's big because then you have way less roam pressure to deal with at that which at that point would only be on that vigil for uh mm -hmm. any sort of flank, but they weren't in any position to help out Jaeger as Shop was in a nice little getting caught in a nice little crossfire. Defenders from protect no your limits. bombs from being defused by attackers. That yeah, bigger but... biggerly pick. Going back to kitchen dying. Same operator selection as the rounds prior, possibly, possibly doing the same vertical extend. But they did make some corrections on it to make it a lot better for the second time round holding. However, they didn't have the heart breach on the board. Uh, on the so we'll see how it goes. Five people back on the board. I'm hoping that they just be stiff with how they hold it. They kind of don't give up the position too early. Because that was their main issue in the round they lost. And I think that even Five with the hard breach being available on the side of uh, no limits, I feel like Inferno would have still won that round because they held true to their hold. Especially Jen there, playing inside the closet. He wasn't over swinging, he kind of got the information and ducked down. The only thing that I could see really being an issue here is they kind of stack all three of their ADSs on that one shield. And with this site, they're not really bringing that one by. So that area could just become a hotbox. And if they throw a nade in there, Jen has nothing he can really do besides sit there and pray that it doesn't kill him, but at the end of the day, it will. And I think that if they can kind of just maybe shift an ADS into the closet there, it might save the round and Jen's life. But it all depends on how they push this. They're going for a similar push that I see here. Not a single on that window. If Yami, I'm doing the same thing he did earlier. Um, luckily, uh, not Ace has kind of learned his lesson and is a bit farther back, a little more passive on that window. Well, uh, the other map, side of the map is being completely overrun by uh, No Limits. They're not holding it, it's okay, but they just gotta hold their position. Yeah, they, they got that mirror window open with turn early, that'll be big. That'll be really good Jen's ability to support this Jaeger. So, we'll see how they're able to counterplay. Adiet, Nade, well, shield is down there. 
takes a good chunk of health away from a shop, but not, not able to capitalize. Jen will get a big frag on Kulo to bring it down to 5v4. Early in the round, D card will get a refrag as well. Buck's taking some damage from, from Jen below with the smoke. They are starting to work that top floor control quite well, and they, they do have that full control with a minute 30 left. They do not have any dedicated soft breaches for the first round. However, that was not an issue for them, so we'll see if they're still able to get some of that vertical play going. Bach does still have two breach charges on the board. Some of those breaches are to clearing off people from dining. Uh, but as of now, they're just down to the basement. Who me is starting to take choke control here. Big C4 coming out. with 50 seconds left. It is it is still a very good round on either side. Shop gets a big pair. Another refrag coming out from B card. We got Inferno playing on that beach B bomb chassis and Yom sitting in bar. They are they don't effectively have a great way of holding kitchen if they were to decide to isolate Ergo. I'm a bit confused here why Yep is so far away. Yeah, Not really anybody's pushing that side of the map, and he's kind of just letting his teammate hatch, be overwhelmed. Full sight control now. Yeah, it's just on this castle now to make a play. They do not have Diffuser, however, so they will have to either chase the kill or go for, seconds remaining. go for the Diffuser. Which cast? Yom is just taken off, getting Ten seconds way left. out of there. Nobody has Diffuser either. Vicar just grabbed it, but will he have time to get to down go. there? Especially with that no, castle not. barricade in the way. Oh no, it'll all come down to this, and Yom will able to. Operator, you were out of time. Live long enough. It's insane to me because realistically that shouldn't have worked. Yom played a bit, well, not a bit, a way too passive there and his team got kind of overwhelmed there. Ergo really couldn't do anything about it. And he got away with it due to the, due to the no limits kind of negligence there. They, they kind of just forgot about bomb. They kind of just rushed side and they, that's what they've been doing this entire time. I don't think they've gotten bombed down once. They've kind of just gone for frags and it's been working out for them. But the one round that Yom decides to play passive and he kind of realizes, hey, they don't have bomb. He runs away and kind of waits to see if they can grab it. He did the right thing there, and I, in a normal game, I don't think that would work, but he understood that, and I, that's where you give props to the guy, is that he, he understood the situation, he kind of exploited it, and that's a fantastic round win for Inferno. It may not have seemed like the most planned thing, but I'm hoping, I'm really hoping there was a call earlier that someone had dropped bomb upstairs, and then they just didn't realize that they didn't have it, and that's a really good round for them. Yeah, that is quite a blunder on no limits, leaving that diffuser upstairs, because that effectively would have won them that round and got in a 4-2 split. Instead, it's in a deadlock at 3-3, so Yom's got to be thanking his stars right now. That got them. Yeah, once again, as, as you're saying, though, it's good awareness on him to, you know, realize just to get out of there stay alive, because they, they don't have a good way to plant it. Castle as well on a... That Master Dora is coming in clutch. Five seconds to go. So. Yeah, the, the more awareness that they have. That's what I was worried about in Inferno, is that I was like, hey, their awareness wasn't so good earlier. But I'm noticing as the game goes on, their awareness is slowly, slowly building, and they're kind of building like a, uh, a, uh, like a book on how to kind of work around how Nolan's is playing. And they're doing a really good job. They're not making many careless mistakes. They're kind of playing it well. Although, yeah, a little bit of sneaky play here coming from Humi. I don't think they actually know he's here. Hopefully that drone is able to see him. We'll fall back. Just getting right out of there. Not a bad play. Waste a little bit of time and take off. But it, they are going for a full, that full library control. Not Ace is hanging down in bar here. Does the Zero know he's here? Or the Zofia? Sorry. This might be a big pick. He does get thrown out. Does take some damage retreating back to bar. Will regroup and do me. Start going up Mez trying to get a bit of aggressive cancel that. He's going back to fireplace. Just, just getting out of there. It's a solid time waste for uh, no limits there. It'll... At this point, Inferno has effectively no map control with only two minutes left on the board. That's a lot of stuff they have to do now. But looks like Twizzy will start working in his way through bar. Ergo is taking that library control. Jump's following him up here. Uh, they are going to try to go for Breach here. There is just a Mute Jammer on it. Won't be the hardest thing in the world to clear, but they still need to dedicate that utility with an extra amount of time. There is Humi playing downstairs in close dining to get that, capitalize on that. He will react to the Sophia impact going open and fall down with the stairs and possibly go for a flank later on. 
still do not. Oh, they just got stuff off. Jammer off the wall. They are in a good. They are doing a good job recovering their position. They are in a. It will be a close round at the end. Of the once they go for execute, but who me still creeping down? Boss is going to get a big flank off here. Let's see if they recognize recognize the attempt and are able to capitalize down. Nobody seems to notice him. He's slowly creeping his way up. I highly doubt they have no idea. Like, they have the Yams cams should be around that area. I'm hoping that they're able to catch it out. But no, he's up to the upper half of Blue Stairs. See, I'm probably going to get a pick on the Finca here. No, gets pick on the Gen. And then, oh, the Thermite turns around, gets a nice kill on some wall is open though, 44. Um, not really much side control, 30 seconds left. They have they gotten rid of the shield on piano, I'm wondering. Um, it's interesting here, they still have nades on the side of the Finca. Yeah, I'm assuming they have one impact on the side of Zofia. That shield is gone inside of piano. And he's just, he's just spearheading his way in here, not really getting any... Not a good time to even up. 2v2 here, even even man count. It's just Ergo and Yom left on the board. Buck and Kulo, they are still in a great position to take retake this round. Buck might get a he, or kill off. This he will go for it, he'll miss. Yom will get his cover him. Maestro's coming up to half wall now. Yom's in a great position to get this kill. And he does, he gets the oh, trade nice. off the thermite. That was just really unfortunate for Yom. He kind of just unpeaked at just the wrong time. Luckily, Ergo was able to hold them off long enough for him to re-swing and then get the kill there. That's a really nice play there by Inferno. The post-plant awareness from both of them are very, very good. And I, I think that that round definitely deserved to go in their half. I'm surprised that Ergo was able to get in there as quickly as he did. I'm saying that Shup probably just swung in there and was doing... Just just shooting a shoot to try to just distract as much as he could. And I want to say he did his job perfectly. He may not have gotten a kill there, but he wasted enough time that Ergo was able to get the bomb down. And I doubt that they really had an idea what was happening uh, with the bomb. Uh, during that because of all the gunfire because of all the nades because of all that stuff they were definitely a little can. shaky getting into the building at first but they did a great job on executing the limited time they did have as well as playing those trades so they went from a 4v4 to a 2v2 with the span of 10 to 10 seconds there. that excellent execute on side of inferno uh no limits will be going basement now here just a you know normal lineup nothing too crazy you have the double cartridge plus the jaeger I'm uh, not like I said, I'm not here because that's where Nade burned. Nade and burned now does bring it. Ten heavy. seconds left. Or, it, it helps a, quite a bit, especially with holding killer as well as that snowmobile reach. That's what Inferno decides to go for. They do have drones stuck on their side of so they may be going for that snowmobile breach. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm noticing, especially on the side of No Limits here, is I'm kind of disappointed about it, is they're not bringing that mirror, they're not going to exploit that massive, massive uh, void in their van there. And they're going to be going for a more default take here. They've actually made it diffi more difficult for themselves to take this, or to take the round here, uh, due to the fact that they're not bringing a mirror. I'm wondering if they've opened up that dining hatch, because if they have... No, they, they don't seem like there's anyone holding there, actually. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they're going to do. They're just going for like a, a heavy roam, not much structure. It looks pretty default on the side of No Limits. Uh, and I'm kind of confused. If they're going to do a default push like this, why not bring Omai, as you did say? And maybe substitute maybe a bandit and just have the mute there. It's yeah. kind of interesting, but hopefully they've uh, thought through and thought ahead and uh, kind of made a strat around it. Well, one thing they will have to be careful of is those flanks coming from that top floor. They are aware they're up. Malusi is on Mez, but are they aware that Humi is in R? He might be in a good position to get a couple big kills off the rip here. So I don't think they have any intel on him right now. So if he plays his cards right, that is that can be a big pick. Dining hatch will be getting opened up by Yom. Uh, top floor, we still have oh, Lucy rotated down to stock here. It's just getting up, getting that set up and prep done for that execute here. So we do have dining hatch here. Still nothing going on on those flanks. Kulo is starting to work his way up, trying to maybe get a yeah. cheeky pick off here. This Zero has no idea that they're there. They are on cams. I did just hear the sound of a ping, so it could have, possibly could have been on that Malusi. I'm guessing it was. Attackers they, have located a bomb. I think I rotates over to help out. Uh, hopefully Kulo doesn't Shop lose his life here. The is like hella aggressive. Get Gets the, right the kill onto Kulo there. I'm not actually sure if they know if Humi is there, though, because if they keep playing the way they are and they just play the hatch, they could just leave their back turned to him. 
grenade. And that could be devastational. If I don't see anyone able, pushing there. If Umi is able to retake that hatch control, that is big because that hatch is so oppressive on playing that pillar. Especially for post plant. When you have to, you know, retake that control and get those fights going. If he can retake that dining control. But it looks like he's just gonna come down main. They will start hurling for an execute here. Or counter the execute. Chop's starting to get aggressive, taking a little gunfight with Humi on the connector, but Humi will get taken down by the V card. It's currently a 4v3. Both teams are still in a great position. going out for not ace. Doesn't connect. And team killed by Jen. That is a big blunder. He ain't coming out on store. It bounces weird and misses. Don will get a frag. Buck will refrag, not ace will so pick off Jen. Big gunfight coming out from Ergo. Ergo takes on Buck and no ace will be able to refrag and secure the ground. I want to say really quickly that's the second time that's happened. Today, no, in this game, sorry. The Nate has bounced back and nearly got a team kill. And I think I might have even been on the same... No, it's on different halves. I believe... One for each team. Yeah, I believe but, uh, the first time was the uh, first master hold for Inferno where... Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think... It, or, or, I think it was uh, V Card who almost blew himself after his nade got picked up by a Wumai Magnet. Uh, yeah, I, I can see that as well. I'm noticing like they 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 have a decent hold going, but the defenders, the ones that like like Humi specifically, like they they got away with the round, but it got a lot closer than it probably should have. He had a decent flank going, but they didn't really understand that he was there, and he kind of just backed up. It was a really smart play, but the power of hindsight and the power of being an observer is that, like, we understood that he could have been able to get a good flank off there, bombed. probably been a bit more secure, but they ended up winning the round at the end of the day, so I can't be too mad about it. Um, I want to say Inferno, they're not doing anything inherently wrong here. I do think that there could be a little bit, little bit more thorough, and that's, that's, that's the issue along with this, is that, like, no limits aren't exactly getting too aggressive on the roams. They're, they're there just long enough to cause an issue. They'll be like, oh yeah, we have to drone them out again. We don't know where they are. And that's what's wasting all of Inferno's time. Specifically Ergo, he's the main droner for that team. And he's he has to waste all of his time. He's droning every little nook and cranny. He's great at droning. But the uh, poor part of that is that if the defenders just back off, he's droning everything for nothing. And that kind of wasted a good minute and a half of their time, causing an execute to happen a little bit sooner than it probably should have. Um, and they couldn't really sit there and kind of look around and kind of understand what was happening they just kind of had to run in and we saw it there where they were almost able to get away with it running in but a Humi kind of blocked that off pretty quickly yeah and it is it is a bit of a mind game with playing that realm but not actually taking any engagement because you still have, to have that in the back of your mind of what if he does decide to get aggressive this one so if you just completely ignore it and that's when he does that is which possibly could come out at a very inopportune time. I think there ever is a good time to get, to get flanked. But it can be very decisive on the round if he does decide to take action and get aggressive on those flanks. I want to say something that I don't think either team has properly misdrone somebody yet. Which I'm really happy about is that there's never been, there hasn't been a round yet where a misdrone has lost them. And that's, that's like, kind of reinforces the point of these teams are playing to their peak potential. And we're not seeing like a bad game coming up from either one of them. That's really, it's really fun to cast that. It's really fun to see that from both teams here. Uh, Jen getting a bit aggressive on this breach here opens up that breach into a master. Understands there's people playing up there. Understands there's someone playing inside of piano here. Kind of crouches in. I'm not sure if the will mine knows. Oh yeah, I believe he understands there's somebody there. Playing a bit aggressive, waiting for the drone there. Understands that there's a frost playing that head hole there. Trying to get a little sneaky pick here onto someone. Not sure who though. V card goes down to the Zofia on the window. Uh, and I believe that opens up Jen here to try to get aggressive on the frost. Cool, mate. Well, in a great position to get a refrag, but Duff will take him down before he has any opportunity to, and it's now a 5v3 for Inferno. Round, a bit sparse on time. Who needs to get a big, big trade on that, or big kill on there to even out that man count? But they are running low on time. They will have to get get the ball rolling here. They effectively still do not have top control players, but they have no vertical presence, they don't have any sort of, and No Limits is still able to Whoa, play all those pulls at the point, they will get Kulo back up and bring it back down to a 4v4. So it looks like they are going for, gonna try to go for an execute gen thrown into the game, so they don't have any util. Bach is in a um, cheeky I... little position here to get some sort of pick off when they do go for execute, let's see if this drone will find him. Which it, it looks like it isn't. I don't think 
on the song at all. It sees A's. Oh, I don't no. think they know Bacchus here at all. It's terrible. I, as I said earlier, they weren't misrunning, but this might cost them a round. It does get the cost one kill on, on there. It is a 3v3, however. Health in favor of uh, Inferno there, though. Boomy gets a big pick. No way. It's a great position to take this round, especially with that echo left on the floor. Dom will swing in, get the for Craig. Gets a kill on the hatch, gets gets a second. Five Ergo is running for the plant. Who me is? He's coming in for a flank. Do they know he, I think they know he's here? They're still watching their hatch. They do have point up on the hatch before. He gets hit. hit. Dom is falling off. Go to trophy. Trophy split. Gets the last frag. Big picks for Yom there on that execute. So I believe he cleaned up three seconds. He pulled it. Which, that, was... that's, that's just massive when you're going I, for an uh... execute late round like that. Yeah, I talked about this earlier. Yom Yom's main issue was kind of just playing a little bit too aggressive and not be able to place his utility as prominently as he probably should have. Right there, we saw why he plays aggressive for moments like that where he can kind of get aggressive and it works out because he has the gun skill to back up why he's playing this way. And I want to say that Yom Yom one of the more gifted players in that department in this league and he just showed yeah, it off right there he single-handedly won that wild. round for inferno because he just ran in and he won every single gunfight he took um and you see even saw there when he was defending that we had planning he stood in the middle of the room he understood that if he died it wasn't the worst thing in the world but he he, he was protecting that man with his life and it's a fantastic play by yum yum there and if he can continue to play like that this game will go in inferno's flavor no doubt in my mind Guys, especially with how long it took for them to get that reho to start working. See if they call for a rehost here, but it is still in prep phase and they have the ability to do so. However, I'm not seeing them call for a rehost. Ten here. seconds left before insertion. Unfortunate. That's one for both teams now this game. Hopefully, the thing is, that wasn't the hard breach for Inferno here. I believe that was Attackers must locate and defuse a flank the watch. I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention to who that was. Um, Though it, it couldn't, it's not as it's not as uh, terrible as if it was like Ergo they got disconnected. So hopefully they can still at least put up a fight. Um, I'm hoping that they can kind of just take it as best they can because at the end of the day, there's not what they can do about it. They could have rehosted, but they chose not to. Hopefully uh, it doesn't cost them in the end. Worst case scenario, five five isn't the worst uh, worst in the world. Um, it could be much worse, and I think that if they play this smart and play this properly, they can capitalize off of maybe. No Limits is getting a bit uh, too aggressive due to the fact that it is a 45. Um, the overconfidence there could cost them, but I'm hoping that we see a nice, nice round here coming out from both teams. Um, and hopefully uh, Inferno isn't too shaken by the fact that they only have four people. And for those who aren't aware, uh, rehost rules, I believe it's if a player disconnects in the first or during prep phase, you have the ability to call rehost. But as soon as it hits that action phase, that that ability has gone uh it's gone. You aren't allowed to call rehost, and you are forced to play the round four v five. So Inferno, and you are also allowed one rehost per team per map. Inferno has not used their rehost for this map, so they did have that option, but they did not elect to take it. But they will get breach on the nice and early. Here. Minute, 30, minute forty on the board. It's looking like a. They're gonna be able to claw something out. Yom is gonna start opening up that dining. Attackers have located a bomb. There's two people down there that are ready. To he is falling back to trophy here. Not Ace is starting to get a bit aggressive on that breach. He is also starting to peak that a bit. Shop is going to start taking these long range gun fights here. He'll be able to tag Umi quite a bit through the Loading wall, but magazine. not enough to finish him off. Still hurts quite a bit, though. Which, which, I'm noticing on the side of Inferno that Yam Yam has completely placed all of his utility. He, is, he has the ability now to get stupidly aggressive. And there's nothing to really punish him for, because he's already done his job completely. And I, I like that out of Yam Yam, because he understands that he's a really good fragger and can be really aggressive here. But now there's nothing stopping him from being so. And that if they can get him to kind of spearhead into the site, they could get a plant down here and it could go very well. Only thing is, I'm noticing that they have all three surges left. So in that 40 seconds, I don't even know if they can use all those. But that'll be great for entering into the site here. Hopefully it won't cost them anything if they can just try to get the site in because shop is underneath still nice gen 4v4 looks really good inside of inferno here if they can just get into sight but they're really not doing anything um i'm hopefully that ergo can kind of get out there and sh yum yum kind of cover them underneath yep doing exactly that we do have stuff down below playing that counter play off from below maestro camp's coming out it is a 3v3 at this point finally down those smokes coming out 
Nade is taking a good chunk of health. He's almost also quite damaged here. Buck is starting to move up and get a bit aggressive. Those Meister can't fire him, but not hitting Nade. Inferno with the help of Ergo with the help of Buck. Shup is still playing below Yama's on mezzanine for for that plant. For that uh post plant. Getting aggressive on that breach, I don't know if Buck is there. Buck will get the frag out. It's all up to Shup now to play that from below. He will take that maestro down him as a matter of fact. Nade coming out. Buck is dropping down below. Shup picks up the frag on him. On the user. Can he get him in time? He does. Let's go! Positioning from the turn Drop there. Close off that round. Shop, I, I, like that's fantastic coming out from Inferno. Like that is like I, there we go. That's my teammate. In an absolutely amazing round there from Shop. A four v five on the side of Inferno. Are they gonna pause and rehost? I'm curious. Pause. Perfect. I want to say fantastic play from Inferno there. Shop. I, I, that's a contender for play of the week in my opinion. But that was insanely good from both uh, from every player inside of Inferno there. Uh, Ergo able to get the plant down there. Yam covering him. They got everything open really quickly, which I think is what won them the round. And a couple mistakes coming up from No Limits there. Buck got the kill there, but they weren't able to send someone downstairs. Except I think they opted to res the Maestro. I'm not actually sure what happened there, but it was kind of a bit of a fluster. I don't think they understood where the guy was originally. It was a bit, it was a bit fluffed up. And I think that now that it's now 4-6 inside of Inferno, they have the momentum. They just, they just kind of destroyed every bit of confidence that No Limits has now. Because, hey, it's 4-6. We just beat you in a 4v5. We, we'll do it with a 5v5. We'll, we'll close this map out. And I think Inferno has every right to do that. They look really, really strong right now. Teams are saying they're ready, so we'll get back onto it. And with that round from those big plays of, of shop there, that does secure Inferno one point from this match. Attackers need to Let's, locate and defuse when as it comes many down to they can. You know, late season when every point will matter. Th those one points are securing those points early in, early in the season. This will make a difference late round. We'll see if they can capitalize on their positioning. Get double three points from this map, or if it will go to overtime here. No limits does have quite a hefty task in front of them, winning those two rounds back to back. So at this point, it's no limits game to lose. But both teams are playing excellently. It's just been uh, Inferno capitalizing on all those opportunities to be able to close out rounds as well as just yeah, the mistakes that Five seconds the limits to go. has been making. But we will be going I do want to say the basement will be a default hold here. Attacker's objective is to locate uh, looks a like bomb they are extending vertical, but we'll see how far they play. I do want to say that they did bring out the Omai that we were talking about earlier. That was the one issue that they really had there. The nades were kind of being very oppressive. And I think they realized that um, when they were attacking, there there was an issue there. And now that they're bringing their Omai, I feel like it could be a very big round for No Limits here because they understood that the, one of the only reasons that they won their downstairs round, they were able to get in there. They removed every bit of um, defensive utility that uh, Inferno had, and they really don't want that to happen to them. So I'm hoping that it's not as a uh, rush type theme. I'm hoping that there's a lot of good gunfights rather than, in my opinion, kind of a fluke round. Um, Inferno here kind of pushing from the top floor over. I like that they've opened up the solar windows. They're going to go for a drone. They, they understand that there was one roaming. Hopefully, Humi doesn't go unnoticed there in the mudroom closet. Yeah. We also um, have Kulo playing top floor near that piano master area. They will have to be watching those flanks because this is now, this is the time where if they are going to be aggressive, it's, it's Attackers now have located a bomb. Um, I believe they did get a spot out, yeah. Frag on the Kulo there to make, to open up the, you know, open up the round. 5v4 for Inferno with a minute 45. Looks like Humi has fallen back to sight. They're all turtling now. Inferno has full control of top floor to do with as they please. I believe they, they already have dining hatch open, which will be big for that post plant. If they are able to get a plant down on pillar. Starting to drone out. Fink is pushing, Shop is pushing down those west mains along with Jen. Hey, 280. I believe those are. This uh, action Lucy. Is it? Okay. Yes, that's why you can't shoot it. That is nothing to scoff at, but they are going to start opening up those walls and boiler, as well as big pixel of man count there. But boiler wall is open. Me starting to get a bit aggressive on breach. Just having a good game so far, 12 and 8. Starting to get a bit uh, aggressive on that, and not able to pick anybody else off. They are just setting up. 
we do have the zero above playing Dying Attack and getting some holes on top of Long Wall again. Blue Meme. Second pick on top. Starting, they're starting to go for Execute. Shuff gets the pick on the blue. It's now a 4v1 for Inferno. They're able to uh, close out the game here. That's all three points. Not Ace has quite the hefty uh, task in front of him. Attackers activating diffuser. He's gonna start yeah, playing, looking for anybody on pillar here, which there will not be anybody playing directly. Jen is playing that long haul wall. He, he's now rotating yeah, blue. Not, still not seeing anybody. Inferno. Jen will get that last frag on him. Close out the game. Seven, seven, four victory for Inferno. Both teams had a great showing, but Inferno was just able to capitalize on everything better. Yeah, I feel like they played a really good game of Siege there, and I feel like, as I said earlier, I was worried early on because they weren't really understanding what was happening on the side of Inferno, but I was like, hey, if they can continue to adapt over the game's uh, length there, and you can see there, early on they had a bit of an issue there, but they kept learning, they kept adapting to what was happening, and their awareness kept getting better of what was happening around them. They built up kind of a playbook around what No Limits was doing, and they capitalized off that tremendously, and I'm really proud of Inferno. They did a fantastic job. Obviously, if you look at Inferno this week and Inferno last week, there's a, there's a huge difference, especially in Yam Yam, I want to say. His gun skill, he really got to showcase that this week uh, rather than last week. And he always, I don't think there was a single round where he was rushing in and dying. But I, I mean, yeah, one time on defense when he was in my, he ran out canine. Other than that, he played a really, really structured game of Siege today. And I think this is a completely restructured Yam Yam from what we saw last week. And I want to say that that game, he did a fantastic job. Absolutely fantastic. Um... But that's not saying that Null Limits didn't do their job. They did a they they played a really long, a really structured play uh, game of siege there. Especially when um, Inferno was on defense there, the top floor, um, they were able to really just slam through, and they did it consistently. Um, unfortunately, they got a little stuck on their defenses there. But uh, at the end of the day, I think Inferno was just the better team, and there's nothing to say that's wrong with that. Uh, especially after those first two rounds, it it was looking like it would be a. Uh... The map would be favored towards no limits, but Inferno was just able to adjust their takes and their holds, uh, you know, to meet what the, meet the aggression. Which good on good job on them for doing so. Which that ultimately caused a good momentum shift as well to allow them to claw back that two round differential that no limits had, and eventually, you know, close out the map with a seven four victory. Yeah, that's really good. I think we have Jen here for an interview. I'm pretty sure that's why he joined the call. Am I, believe, I right with that? Uh, Ergo and Yum Yum are going to join as well. I'm just going to wait for them. I'm going to send them my moss really quick. <laughs> um, Would you mind me if I ask you a question really quickly, Jen? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, what was with your guys DCing last two games? Last two rounds, sorry. Well, you see, a midi has Spectrum, and uh, <laughs> it didn't go in his favor today. So, yeah. Uh, no, that's really unfortunate. Um, Yam Yam, is that you? Hello. Oh my god, it's you. Um, I want to say, dude, from last week to this week, completely different, completely different player. I want to say your utility usage this week was absolutely fantastic. And that round on Kitchen where you will just run in and you won every gunfight, and it wasn't, it didn't look like it was a fluke, it didn't look like you did something stupid. You played that fantastic. Um, overall, just a really, really, really good player this week. And I want to say, uh, honestly, contender for player of the week. Yeah, I just want to oh. thank my team for uh, giving me the callouts. You know, I, I saw my opportunity and I had to take it. I promised everyone a good game and I delivered. That's what mm -hmm. I'm about. I ain't losing. We ain't losing. And I'm making sure of that. And of the fantastic. Um, Ergo, you did a fantastic job in your smoke there. I want to say there's only one round that was a little bit. I don't know. When you guys were basement um, and you were smoking, you kind of got overrun there. I was kind of confused. I, I didn't know if you placed any smoke canisters left. If you had any left in your inventory, if you'd actually thrown in any, I didn't really see much. But overall, you played a fantastic game of smoke there. There was a couple rounds where I was just like, well, he's done a fantastic job here. Um, great smoke player overall. Yeah, that round there was a small miss input. And um, let's say that it ended in a less than ideal way. I needed my teammate. <laughs> <laughs> um... I would say that there was a couple of rounds, especially on Kitchen, where Yam Yam was a bit late to the party, especially when you guys won that off a of Diffuser. Um, he kind of played a bit too passive, and I think that it cost, especially Ergo, his life a lot of the time. Um, but it worked out for him. I want to say, I don't know if you guys knew Diffuser was down, or if you guys had just played it that way, but you did a fantastic job the round. You guys definitely deserve the win this week. 
um, really structured. You didn't misdraw anything. I want to say ergo, every time I looked over at him, he was on a drone. And that's something you really want to see from your support players. Um, and I don't think there was a single time where there was a missed drone. Um, a couple times you guys got flanked, but that's due to the fact he wasn't really bringing any flank watch. Um, but other than that, you played fucking fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I, if I know correctly, I think Ergo has a message for all the fans out there if he wants to leap at that. Well, that was a cutout meow for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anything you guys want to say before you leave? I want to um, say that uh, we over at Team Inferno did this for our amazing organization, Inferno. We did this for you, Cardinal. I love you, Cardinal. We you love you, Cardinal. Me a entry and... Woo! <laughs> Ooh, almost fell. I would like right. to say. Uh, fuck, I forgot. Uh, Hi, Mom. We won this week. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. We did it this week. We got one point last week. This week, we got three. I'm, I'm proud of, my, uh, of the team, of my team. I made them. So, ha. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Um, Thank you. Hopefully, we see as good as the performance we did see this week, uh, the week after the next week, because we do have that one week break. Um, but I want to say you guys did fantastic. Um, congratulations. Good three points secured. Um, four points overall is not too shabby so far. So, congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for showing up for an interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Chick fil A boy. Well, Prism, I love you. Everyone else here, you're all really cute. And uh, on that note, I'm going to hop out. Thanks for casting, yeah. my boy. Yeah. Um, I want to say either of the teams there really could have run away with the win there. I want to say No Limits just had a couple mistakes there. It's the same thing earlier with App State, is there was no definitive player or definitive team that was the issue. That was like, oh my god, they played so terribly. I want to say that there were just a couple mistakes done from both teams, No Limits and App State here. Um, they both played pretty damn good at uh, Game of Siege, but it was just, just slipped away from their hands. Um, I feel like after that 4v5 win on Inferno, the mental on uh, No Limits probably wasn't the best and it kind of showed well yeah especially after that blender where they uh left that diffuser on top floor after um on that kitchen take where they they mm -hmm. had the bodies in place but they just didn't get plant down because that castle bear kid blocked them and they just forgot about the diffuser i feel like that was a big momentum switch in it because after that you could really tell that no limits or inferno sorry started pulling ahead with the lead yeah and you know what at the end of the day we cannot blame it. As I said, can't blame anybody else. Um, can't blame anyone in that game. It was just purely... They adapted faster. They played a little bit better game of Siege. And at the end of the day, congratulations to both teams. You may not have won this week, No Limits, but you definitely showed that you're a very, very competent team. You're a very good defender. Uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, very good team overall. And people... Teams that will be facing you in the future, they'll be looking at this game kind of scared, especially myself. Um, I want to say that you guys have done a fantastic job. Same with Inferno here. You guys did absolutely great. Um, and if you keep this up, you guys will be stars in no time. Yeah, both games tonight were good. Like, they they were never, you know, complete runaways at any point. So it, they were both good games up until the very end, which... You know, that's what all, all you can ask for is that they're both good games and they're both hard fought. And ultimately, in those hard fought games, one team will come out ahead, which unfortunately for No Limits, it was Inferno. But they still played a hell of a game. And it's, you know, you can't win them all. But, you know, sometimes that's just how she goes. Yeah, and I, I think there's something I've learned from consistently. Like, I I, I haven't really played much comp with uh, One Trick, but this was like, like last week was our kind of first ever game. Uh, with that team and I want to say that like I was a little I was not a little I was very harsh on people my first ever cast here and I was very like hey how do you forget this how do you forget this how do you forget that and I want to say that now that I'm looking at it I'm going damn nerves can get to you and when they do get to you there's not much you can do about it when you get to that place of like oh I forgot that because it's because I'm so nervous because of this I'm shaking oh my god um it can really just destroy a game like that and Right now, we kind of saw there, I feel like the as soon as they lost that 45 and that bomb round, I feel like No Limits, the nerves started to kind of get to them and it kind of just um, kind of just destroyed them a bit. And that's OK. 
stuff like that happens and i feel like the more that these guys play together the more that they play comp the more they do this it'll slowly become easier and easier and they'll become better players yeah like for example who me I, I played with him back when we were both on console i know he's a great player and he's having a great night tonight but ultimately you can't just rely on one person to do everything for you and th that mental does play a huge aspect in your team play because you know if one person's down on themselves it it just it snowballs onto everybody so maintaining that mental uh strength and you know realizing you know if you do make a blunder with that like with that diffuser it's just you know coming back the next round going it's all good you know we got this shit happens pretty much so yeah that's it's, about all you can say yeah it's it, it's definitely a tricky balancing act of maintaining that mental where you're not you know playing like playing stupid and you know taking dumb gunfights because you know you're you got that ego on your side as well as the flip side where you're down on yourself it, it's a tough balancing balancing act yeah so it's but by and large like both teams did great tonight like there, there's nothing to be ashamed of with those performances so oh, i don't know if that's about it for tonight i think that it's a pretty good way to end it off. A uh, really good game coming out there. I couldn't have asked for a better one to kind of end her off on here. Um, I think the game could have easily gone to overtime, but I'm happy that it ended the way it did. Um, really good conclusion there. Both teams are fantastic, but I think that's a good way to wrap her up. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's about it for tonight. So I believe that was the last game of week two, was it? Uh, no, I mean, I think it might be the last streamed one. I My game, uh, the one trick game, got delayed. Till Tuesday, and I don't know if it'll be streamed. Probably not, but if it does, uh, that'll be happening Tuesday at six CST. But if not, then this is the last stream game of week two of the Premier League. Yeah. So yeah, good games all by and large this week. So I hope you beat Jimmy for me, so I can, you know, make <laughs> fun of him. I love Jimmy, but you know, <laughs> it's a bit of a character. But yeah. Other than, yeah. Good luck in your match this week. But that wraps her up for games tonight so if everybody yeah. has a good night enjoys tomorrow's monday so <laughs> hope you're not yeah. too dead Everyone. for for monday and work and all that but yeah have a great night and okay thanks for tuning in